Welcome to Victorious Living with Pastor Charles Cowan. Now let's join Pastor Cowan and the congregation of Faith is the Victory Church. This is Victorious Living. Your conscience, my conscience, our consciousness, our conscience will tell us whether or not we've done wrong, we've acted wrong, or we've acted right. It's just in there to do that. Amen. Just the Holy Spirit's in there to do that. And the Holy Spirit, there's a lot more to the Holy Spirit than just speaking in tongues. Yes. I mean, if you know the Holy Spirit can do more than just enable us to speak with tongues. As important as that is, that is a part of the total package of the Holy Spirit. But boy, he can do so many other things in our life other than just, you know, enabling us to build ourselves up on our most holy faith, praying in the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit, he knows what's back there. He knows what's today and he knows what's tomorrow because he is the Spirit of God. God knows the past better than you know it. He knows the present better than we know it. And he knows the future of, of what's going to happen out there. Amen. So if we listen to it, yes. we, can, we can avoid pitfalls. Yes. We can avoid wrong decisions. Yes. Amen. We can avoid a lot of things that we, we, we could talk about tonight that we won't talk about, but he can lead us to do that. So this new birth, that, that Paul talks about the washing of regeneration, renewing of the Holy Ghost. This new birth is accomplished by the wash, I said this, by the washing of the blood of Jesus and the quickening power of the Holy Spirit. And so folks, we can be born again. We can be what they could say, tongue talkers or speak with tongues or whatever. But sometimes we can just kind of rear back on our own abilities, which doesn't take us very far, Amen. which doesn't accomplish very much for our life. And we can, we can, we, we can become, we can, we can actually, a person can actually become prideful. I am spirit filled. I speak with tongues. And so we, we look over in the book of revelations, revelation one, chapter one and verse, uh, Verse five, just for a moment. And from Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness and the first begotten of the dead. Now notice he uses a term and we've read it and we understand it, that Jesus was the first born. He was born from death to life. He was born uh, from, from the death imposed upon him by our sins he, he was born when he paid the price for our sins. He was born then. He was quickened there. The Spirit of God quickened him and he became the firstborn from the dead. Well, if he's the firstborn, that means that God has put some numbers on this thing. And if he's the firstborn, there had to be a secondborn. Isn't that right? And so I don't know which one was, if Peter, James, or John, I don't know who was the second born in all of that or the first born, but we know Jesus was. But somewhere your number has been called. Amen. You have been, I have, we have been born from the dead by the spirit of God, the quickening power of God's spirit and by the washing of regeneration, that the, by the washing of the blood of Jesus that washed away our sins. So we have been, quicken together and we're in the number uh, we're, we are in the number what was Jesus born from the dead what was his status after he was born from the dead what was his status his status number one was life the life of God and on and on we can make, make that list go on and on but his status was right with God that he was right before God and on and on, as I said, on and on we could, that was his status. His status was that he had power and dominion and authority over what had taken hold of 
because he took my death, your death, your sin. Yes. He, 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 he was born, delivered out of that and born anew and became the firstborn of every cre creature or, every, uh, or of every creation of God. So he was born into authority. Yes. He was born into power. He was born into faith. Oh, whatever we could mention. And guess what? If your number is 252 million billion or whatever, guess what? You were born into the same thing. Amen. I was born into the same thing. Amen. Amen. And so we have to we have to sometimes, you know, kind of look look at ourselves and say, why do I come to church? Why do I read the Bible? Why do I pray? Why do I do all of the, those those kinds of things? Because there's something on the inside of you that is telling you that this is what God would have you to do. But carnality, walking carnally before God, can, it, 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 it can, what's, what's the word? It can diminish the sound of that to us and come into where the carnality speaks to us greater than the Spirit of God. Or we hear the carnal voice greater than we hear the voice of the Spirit that's on the inside of us. So once again, Revelations one through five. And from Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness and the first begotten of the dead and the prince of the kings of the earth and the prince of the kings of the, we are kings and priests unto God. Not when we get to heaven, but right here in this present world, we are kings and priest unto God. That's what happened to us when we got born again. We were put into that status by God. Amen. We didn't put ourselves there, but by our faith in Christ, God put us there. And so from Jesus Christ, who's the faithful witness and the first begotten of the dead and the prince of the kings of the earth unto him that loved us. Okay, now we're getting back on love. How did he love us? He loved us unconditionally. Amen. You didn't have any good thing to bring to God, nor did I. None whatsoever. If I feel like I did, there is some self, selfishness in my way. I had nothing to bring to God. Amen. But he said, just come like you are. That's a song in it, just as you are, just as I am. And we, he said, just come as you are and I will accept you just like you are because I have done something to make you different than just what you are. And so he tells us to do that, amen. So the renewing of the Holy Spirit is a complete change of the inward man, it's the new birth. He's born from above or he's born of God. On the other hand, our flesh still has the Adamic nature in it, but we are to consider it dead. Now listen to what I'm, what I'm saying. We are to consider our, our Adamic nature dead, but we know it's not dead because it can still do some of that same stuff. But here's how we know. We, we, can, uh, we are to, to consider the Adamic nature because we're born from the similitude, similitude, we are born uh, after Adam. But we are to consider the carnal, the carnal part of us, we are to consider it dead. How do we consider it dead? We consider it dead by our submission to the inborn nature of God through the word of God. When that happens, we have subdued the carnal Adamic nature because the new nature has come to the forefront and manifesting itself in our walk with God. So what do we do? We're putting the Adamic nature in its place as being dead and we are manifesting the new life that we have in Christ minus the carnality, minus all of that that went along with the uh, Adamic uh, nature. But the way we do that, how do we say we do it? By our what? By our submission. Everybody say submission. Now here's the problem sometimes, folks, and I, I don't know that, that you, you do. I don't know, I'm just, I'm just preaching. But here's the problem sometimes is, people pick out some scriptures that they're willing to be obedient to and the others that they're not, they just leave them alone. Yes. 
Amen. Amen. Because they're so focused on these few scriptures or this number of scriptures, they're so focused on their involvement in that, they forget there's some other stuff over here that needs to be done too. That's right. And so it's easy to do it. Amen. It's easy, easy to do that. And, uh, you know, uh, we shouldn't do it. <laughs> what else can I say? We shouldn't do it. I shouldn't do it. And we shouldn't do it. Now, all of the counsel of God, now where do we get the counsel of God? We get the counsel of God from his word. Listen, folks, every morning, people don't, God don't come to everybody's house and say, time to get up. You know, even your alarm clock, you don't even obey your alarm clock sometimes. How are you going to obey God? So God doesn't do that. You know, I talk to some people, it just sounds like them and God's just having a conversation all day long. Well, our hearts can be on God. Our mind can be on God. Amen. And we are to keep our mind on things that are right, good, and of a good report. We are to do that. But, but to say that God comes in my room every morning. But I do hear the voice of God in my spirit. In my spirit. So, you know, sometimes I, you know, I don't know. I, I, see a lot, I hear a lot of preachers. I talk to a lot of preachers first and last. Talk to myself first and last. And, you know, I think, boy, I'm telling you too, God's just talking to them all the time. And I'm thinking, you know, God ain't saying nothing like, nothing like that to me, you know. And so here comes the devil along and says, see there, you know, hear God. But I hear God every day when I read his word. I hear God every day when I'm thinking on what God has said to me. I'm keeping my attention on his word. Uh, I'm keeping my attention on the Lord, Lord, and I'm hearing in the inner man what God's saying to, to me. So he does talk to us every day. Amen. A amen. All right, let me go a little further, get off of that. So all the counsel of God to us is for the purpose of enabling the believer to conform to the inner nature that has the love of God in it. Now, I'm gonna say that again. All of the counsel of God is in his word. I think we all agree with that. All of the counsel of God to us, found in his word, is for the purpose of enabling us as a believer to conform to the inner nature, our inner nature that has the love of God in it. We must remember that love is the greatest of all spiritual qualities. Amen. It is, one, it is the most holy of all spiritual qualities is the love of God. The love of God that's shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Spirit. So we must remember that, that the love of God is the greatest of all of the spiritual qualities because it is God. Love, God doesn't have love. God is love. That's who he is. And we have him in our heart. I mean, you can say that tonight. Thank God I have him in my heart. Well, I got him in my heart. I got who he is in my heart. And so if God is in my heart, I have the love of God in my heart. And God's simply saying, just leave it out. Just live, leave it out. Amen. And guess what? Your faith will work. Because what? Faith works by love. And so it's important, folks. It's important. Believe me, it is, is important. Now look what Ephesians, real quickly, I'm, I'm trying to wind up uh, on my first closing. <laughs> Ephesians chapter four and verse 24, look, look at the instruction that Paul gives to us and gave to the Ephesian church, but it's good for us today as well. Ephesians chapter four, verse 24, and that you put on the new man, and that you put on the new man which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. So holiness, let me make this little statement while I've got it on my mind. Holiness does not come to us from without. Holiness comes to the believer from within. And so he said, and you put on the new man, which after God is created, God created this new man in righteousness or in right standing and created this new man in true holiness. Holiness is on the inside of you tonight, but I have to put it on my outside man. 
so that the holiness manifests itself so you can see it. So, so people can see it. And so that's what we do. You know, you know, I've heard people pray, oh, God, make me holy or make me live holy. Well, God don't make us do anything, but he'll help us. Romans chapter eight, verses one through four goes like this. We're talking about the characteristics of love and we talked about a little other things in there. There, there is therefore, this Romans chapter eight, verse one, there is therefore now at this present time, in this present moment, there is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus. Now watch it, it's a qualifier. This verse has a qualifier in it. And you have seen that, haven't you, when you read this. There is a qualifier. Now listen to it. It says this, there is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Indicating that if I walk after the flesh, the Holy Spirit's going to bring a conviction. You know, we use that word condemnation, but the Holy Spirit's going to bring a conviction if I'm not walking in this right place with God that he instructs me to walk in. So, but Paul uses that word condemnation or the, the, the King James uses that word condemnation. He says, there is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, that's us, who walk not after the flesh or after the Adamic nature or after the carnal fleshly nature, but after the spirit, after the spirit of God, the spirit that we've been born of. Verse two, for the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus, for the law of the spirit of life, but after the spirit, after the spirit of life, but for the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from what? The law of sin and death, which, what does that tell me? Sin, the law of sin and death no longer when I'm walking in the spirit has any authority over my life. Amen. Boy, that's worth shouting about. Hallelujah. Amen. If we run, let's run about that. Amen. Let's jump. Let's, let's praise God ab about that. So he said, there's no condemnation to them who are or which are in Christ Jesus who walk not after the flesh. How many of you know it's possible for a Christian to walk after their flesh? We all know that. We all know that. So he says there's no condemnation, there's no conviction con uh, to them which are in Christ who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus, so the spirit of life is a law, comes from God. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh, they couldn't keep it. God sent in his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh. It didn't, it didn't say that he sent him in sinful flesh. He sent him in the likeness. In other words, he was like us. He was born uh, of a woman. He was, uh, he was the son of God, but yet he was the son of man. He was born after the similitude, the similitude of Adam. And so he's in the earth, not as a son of God, but he's in the earth just like we are in a flesh body. Amen. But he has committed no sin at that point. So the law of the spirit of life, let me get it right. There is now no, not, no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus who walk, who conduct, who do not conduct themselves after the flesh, but conduct themselves after the spirit. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. Everybody say, thank God I'm free. Now, you know, I don't know what you're dealing with tonight. I don't know what you're going through. You don't know what I'm dealing with tonight. But thank God, when I look at what God has done for me through Christ, I am free from the condemnation, but I am under the conviction of the Holy Spirit who works in me that gives me the power over the law of sin and death. In other words, Satan can't make me do anything that I don't yield to. Satan has any power over me, it's because I'm yielding to that, to, to, to him. But the law of the spirit of life in Christ has made me free from the law of sin and death. Verse three, for what the law could not do 
that it was in that it was weak through the flesh. The flesh couldn't keep it. God sent in His own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh, and for sin, condemned sin in the flesh. He knew no sin that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled or that the righteousness of the law might be brought into manifestation in us who walk not after the flesh, but what? After the spirit. Hallelujah. Let me finish up just a little bit. So the law of the spirit of life is the law of grace. Grace, the grace of God has imparted to us the merit, the excellence, and the worth before God that we will ever need is, is the spirit of life. It's the law of grace. Walking in love cannot be accomplished until the law of grace is activated in my life. Folks, this, help, this will help us in our prayer life because sometimes we're asking God to do something that he's already done. Sometimes we're asking God to give us something that he's already given us. And that means that we're not righteous conscious we, we, we don't have the right conscious mentality of what righteous means in the sight of God. So we ask for something he's already given us. We ask him to do something that he's already done. We ask him to do things like that that he's already done. Simply say it, we do not have a righteousness consciousness when we do that. Amen. I'm going to get through here. We'll be through with this just in a moment. So perk up here. We'll, we'll, we'll get through it. So walking in love cannot be accomplished until the law of grace, of the law of God's grace and what it has worked in me is activated in my life. This law of grace is activated in two ways. Number one, it is act, the law of grace is activated through my surrender and my obedience to God and my faith in God's faithfulness. That's how we activate this law of grace that God has done for us. We activate the grace of God through faith when we are born again. We activate the love by faith just like we did when we were born again. So what do we say? I have the faith of God. The faith that's in me will move mountains. The faith that's in me will do what is impossible? That's my confession. But I'm also confessing that I have been made to walk in this law of grace through Christ Jesus. So I get up, we get up in the daytime, go through the daytime, say, thank you, Father, for what you birthed me into. Thank you, Father, what you birthed me into. Thank you, Father, I'm not struggling to get to you. I'm not struggling to get to know you. I have been birthed into Christ and therefore I have been birthed into God and now I am the temple of God. You are the temple of God. Amen. And we activate the law of grace. How did I say that? We activate the law of grace through our surrender and through our obedience to the word of God. And if you're not doing that, if I'm not doing that, I've got news for myself. That is simply this, that I'm not going to get from God what God has already done for me Amen. if I don't understand all of that. Amen. And sometimes we hear and sometimes we don't hear. Sometimes we listen, sometimes we don't listen. Sometimes we, we say, boy, I'll be glad and he gets through. But folks, you know, people have all kinds of thoughts. I've had all kinds of thoughts. Oh, Lord, I've, I've, I've sat in a lot of sermons and I'm like, oh, God, when's it going to get done? Yeah. <laughs> I remember one time I was in Tulsa in a, in a full gospel uh, businessmen's meeting, I guess it was, somewhere. And uh, this professor from this university was the speaker. And Lord of mercy, he got so far over my head, it wasn't even funny. I didn't even know what he's talking about. And I'm sitting there saying, Oh God, when is he going to get, if he don't hurry up and get done, I've got to get out of here, you know. <laughs> and so, you know, that was, that's flesh. Amen. That's flesh. I, it's interesting. I'm going to close. I'm going to close. I, I've done, kept you too long tonight here. But, uh, you know, it's interesting sometimes 
And people say, well, you, you know, uh, I had a preacher tell me, they said, well, now, Brother Joe, what you need to do, you need to really shorten up your sermons because you don't need to keep the people in there because they're not going to sit there and listen to you for, for 40, 50 minutes. And you know what I thought? Now, this is what I thought concerning that conversation. So don't take me wrong. Don't, don't go out and say, press again. Said, you know what I thought? No, but we can go to a movie. We can go to a ball game. And we can sit in our seat for 40, 50 minutes or over an hour and never go to the bathroom. Amen. What's that, John? Go to a ball game and sit there for two hours and never go to the, never have to go to the restroom. I'm just telling you the truth. Amen. Isn't that true? Y'all look at me like, well, boy, he's really on it tonight, ain't he? Yeah, he really, really, oh, you know, no, no, yeah, yeah, you know. But, but I'm saying that in relation to this, that don't keep people anymore over 40, 45 minutes because they're not going to come if you keep them longer than that. But the world... I rest my case. I rest my case. Amen. God's calling us to move up and move in and move closer. Can you say amen to that tonight? And the love of God constrains us to do what is right. And the love of God helps us by the power of the Holy Spirit not to do what, what is wrong. Amen. So if we really want God manifesting himself through our life, we do have to do it the way God says to do it. Do, can you agree with that tonight? Thank you once again for being a part of our broadcast today. I'm always grateful to know that you're there and that you're watching and that the Lord is blessing you as you receive the word of the Lord. I want to pray with you uh, before we leave today. Father, I pray for the people. I pray, Lord, that your hand of blessing, your hand of deliverance, your hand that brings good things into their lives will be upon them and that they will receive that which you have provided for them in Christ Jesus and their life will be made better because of those things that you have done and that which they have received by faith from you. In Jesus' name, I pray. Thanks again. We always appreciate you being there, as I've already said, and we'll see you next time right here on Victorious Living. You've been watching Victorious Living with Pastor Charles Cowan. It's our hope that today's message has ministered to the need you have in your life. If you would like to receive today's message in its entirety, please call 1-800-842-7896. Or if you're in the Nashville area, call 615-226-2145 and ask for the product number on the screen. Visit us online at victoriousliving.org. If you're ever in the Nashville area, come and worship with us. Sundays at 10 a.m. and 6 p.m. and Wednesdays at 7 p.m. From Pastor Cowan and the Congregation of Faith is the Victory Church, we'll be looking for you next time right here on Victorious Living.